na mimi nianze yangu by saying that on Tuesday the 4th of February 2020 while on transit abroad it became my sad duty to announce to the nation the passing on of the second president of the Republic of Kenya His Excellency Daniel Toroitich Arap Moi Immediately upon receiving the news I like millions of Kenyans was engulfed with a sense of sadness and loss and with a heavy heart we closed our eyes and said a prayer of thanks to the almighty God for the life of President Moi a prayer for peace and comfort for his family for his friends our nation and our continent for he was indeed truly a legendary son of Kenya and Africa today once again on behalf of a nation in grief i extend our heartfelt gratitude to all the visiting heads of state and government former heads of state and government heads of delegation and other distinguished guests who have joined us today for this national memorial service and also to the many many more people who who have sent their messages of condolence over the last three days we have witnessed an overwhelming expression of public sorrow with hundreds of thousands of Kenyans lining up along the streets of our capital in unending queues to parliament to pay their last respects to the former president fellow Kenyans the democratic narrative of our long march to nationhood must be told and retold for generations to come for today we stand tall on the strong so- shoulders of our forefathers and their moist place amongst those who dreamt of the modern kenya is unshakable and even as we celebrate his life we must continue to tell the story so fellow kenyans today i choose not to mourn the passing of an icon but rather to celebrate a statesman and a giant of history president moi president moi's life a full life chronicled as 96 years made him one of the few Kenyans whose life journey closely mirrors all the stages of our nation we celebrate the remarkable journey of faith and hope that began in a sleepy village in Kabartonjo and the story must be told of a ragged barefooted orphan boy knocking on the door of missionaries in search of help and enlightenment at a time when illiteracy had a firm grip on our people and education was often considered foreign and unwelcome the young daniel moy now educated and with a wealth of opportunities available to him but true to the spirit of public service and commitment to helping others achieve their full potential he chose to become a teacher naturally the future president of the republic of kenya excelled in that role rising to the rank of a headmaster in very short order while also embedding his lifelong passion for education however 
even as he scaled in his career. Daniel Moy understood that injustice of the colonial era that was all around him, and he decided to heed the call of his local community and put himself forward to serve as their representative in the Legislative Council or LegCo. There, and together with other founding fathers of our nation, he helped Kenya seize a hard-fought independence from a colonial power, giving birth to the modern independent nation that we live in today. The story must also be told of an astute politician known for his seemingly prophetic ability to predict future political trends. Many, including the late Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, likened his foresight to a giraffe. The late Mzee Moy served in various capacities in independent Kenya. He had the rare honor to serve his motherland as a member of parliament, a cabinet minister, the vice president, and finally, as the president of the Republic of Kenya for 24 years, four months, and eight days. Fellow Kenyans, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, from his early life, President Moy understood the value of Kenya being bigger than any single individual. When the nation called for bridging divides and putting the country above self, he led his party out of opposition and into government thereby ensuring that our nascent republic was devoid of part, uh, partisanship and political bickering. When called to serve throughout the 60s and 70s, Mze Moy served humbly and diligently, helping shape a modern and vibrant nation. Following the death of the first president of the Republic of Kenya, the late Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, President Moy stepped into the apex of leadership in 1978 and immediately brought calm and confidence to a nation that was reeling in shock following the unexpected death of our first Kenyan head of state. The story must be told of the man who on assuming this high office as the second president of the Republic, Muzay Moy adopted a governance style and mantra that perfectly resonated with the needs and aspirations of his fellow citizens. When Kenyan spoke in 2002, he chose to abide by their wishes, and he led his party into the opposition. He consistently reminded us that opposition was not an enemy to the nation, but rather an alternative government in waiting and must be loyal to the country, always promoting ideas and strategies to enhance peace, love, and unity for our people. The love for his country and his commitment to uniting Kenyans informed his Nyayo philosophy of peace, love, and unity, which became the rallying call for our nation, expressing our desire to be a cohesive nation of diverse communities brought together by our shared values and aspirations. The Nyayo philosophy was inspired by the recognition that the quest to transform the lives of our people 
is a journey that cannot be undertaken by a single generation or administration. It is a journey underpinned by the knowledge that nation building is a continuous endeavor undertaken brick by brick, generation by generation, and administration by administration. Under President Moi, great strides were made with regard to education, women's empowerment, and transformation of the civil service, as well as the deepening of our unity, prosperity, and place of esteem within the community of nations. We celebrate Mzee Moi for the transformation and education sector through the 844 system of education, which we have recently re-energized under the competence-based curriculum. We remember him for the Nyayo Free Milk Program, which was the precursor to our current school feeding programs. The establishment of countless girls' schools at a time when the prevailing culture was firmly against education of the girl child. The active promotion of the place of women in leadership in politics, in business, the civil service, amongst many other progressive initiatives. Fellow Kenyans, many of us often wonder what is in a color. When President Moy was called upon to choose a presidential standard, he settled for one in green that we see before us. This singular act inspired his conquests in conservation. His environmental credentials are indeed second to none. The iconic mem memories of Moy building countless gabions, stone by stone, driving an, uh, an aggressive reforestation program of our nation by spearheading tree planting campaigns, signaling our nation's steadfast and unshakable anti-poaching stance by burning millions of dollars of ivory. These memories imprinted in our hearts will live with us forever. Fellow Kenyans, on some of the darkest days in our country's history, President Moy's resolute strength calm the nation. There was perhaps, again, no greater evidence of this than on the 8th of August 1998, when President Moy stood on the still smoldering ruins of the U.S. Embassy, reassuring the nation that we were safe and the perpetrators of that heinous and cowardly act would be brought to justice. On that day, he did the unprecedented and drove to the scene of the attack in the company of the then luminaries of the opposition parties and they stood together for Kenya. President Moy's vision for Kenya, I believe, inspires us to continue to work tirelessly to harness that which elevates all of us as a people to greater heights of unity, prosperity, and democracy. Indeed, the Nyaya philosophy of peace, love, and unity not only inspires us, but finds wings in the process of validation and eventually in the implementation of our Building Bridges initiative. We are also building on his momental, monumental achievements across the full spectrum of our social, political, economic, and cultural spectrum, ensuring that Mze Moy will gaze down on us from his place of deserved rest in heaven with affirmation and pride. The unity 
that President Moy pursued transcended boundaries. It was not only unity between brothers and sisters within our borders, but also unity of the brothers and sisters that form our East African community and the greater continent of Africa. President Moy recognized that the path to prosperity for individual African states lay in promoting inter-Africa trade, integration, and building bridges between our communities and nations that recognize that we have far more in common than we do have as differences. And it is this underlying philosophy that inspired President Moy to team up with, amongst others, President Benjamin Mukapa, who is here with us today, to spearhead the revival of the East African community. We owe it to President Moe's generation of visionary African leaders who dared to dream and envision the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement that creates the largest free trade which we now have su succeeded in concluding and which will take effect on the 1st of July 2020. Fellow Kenyans, as an avid peacemaker, statesman, Pan-Africanist, and champion for a more united and just world, Mzee Moi spearheaded a number of initiatives that brought lasting peace within our region and beyond. The people of Uganda, the Sudan, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, Rwanda, Democratic Republic of the Congo and Burundi can all testify to the peace and diplomatic initiatives brought under the stewardship of Mzee Moi and which have made those nations immeasurably more peaceful, inclusive, and democratic. Further afield, it was under his administration that Kenya began our long tradition of serving under United Nations and other peacekeeping missions. Mzee Moi saw our defense forces not merely as an organ for defending Kenya, but also as a powerful force for good that could, that could contribute to protecting the most valuable or the most vulnerable of humanity from the ravages of civil war and strife. Mzee Moy brought safety and security to many in areas of conflict, which are now vibrant nations and prosperous countries due in part to the participation of Kenya in bringing light in their darkest times. At home, Mzee Moy guided our nation's journey into the political maturity that we enjoy today. It was under his wing that our nation transitioned back to multi-party democracy, a mode of governance that President Moy way back in 1991, warned that it could be extremely divisive if not properly managed and customized to the unique demands of our culture, our history, and aspirations. When the time came to leave the national stage, Mzee Moy did what was then unthinkable. He voluntarily and without hesitation, peacefully handed over the reins of power. In doing so, not only did the second president set a first that continues to be the benchmark to this very day, he also elevated his stature to that of a great patriot and statesman. Kenya was 
and is undoubtedly better for having had Mze Daniel Toroi teach Arab Moi as her son, her servant, her leader, and her role model. We should all learn from his, from his inspiring journey and the chronicles of his life. Mzemoi will be laid to rest, but he will continue to live on in each and every one of us. Indeed, we come not so much to mourn the passing of a man, but to celebrate the life of a giant of history. As we pay our last respects and prepare to lay Mzemoi to a well-deserved rest, we hold in our thoughts and prayers his family, his friends, and loved ones. In this solemn moment, let us all take comfort in the fact that President Daniel Toroiti Charap Moi leaves behind a towering legacy of good that will transcend the generations. We are comforted by the memory held so dear by this gallant son of Kenya. We find comfort that peace is one of the very foundations of family, community, and nationhood here in Kenya. And today, let that peace that surpasses all understanding attend our way. May God rest the soul of this great son of Kenya in eternal peace. May God bless Kenya. May God bless Africa. Asante ni sana.